Hello, everybody. Welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. Today, we've got a wonderful dish coming at you from, again, the wonderful magazine Cooking Light that is no longer publishing with this very tasty dish with vegetables that are stupendous. You want to know what it is? Come on, everybody. Let's get cooking. Today's shout out goes to Matt, 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 Haker, 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 Thanks, Matt, for supporting the channel. And this time, I got your name correct. Thanks for the correction. And now you can use that audio whenever you want. If you want to get a shout out in my next video, stay tuned to the end to find out how. Today, we'll make a dish that will be done in about 20, 25 minutes or so. It's a very simple dish to make. And it's very tasty. It's called chicken with pepperonata sauce and roasted broccoli. And if you don't want to do the pepperonata sauce, if that's a little more difficult, don't need to. It's going to taste beautiful when you're done with the dish. Here are the ingredients. One tablespoon of olive oil. Six chicken thighs. Three-fourths teaspoon of salt. Three-fourths teaspoon of pepper. And no, it's not the same shot that I use every time. It's different. Check the footage. Two grounds of broccoli, chopped up by Happy Healthy Wife. Half a yellow onion, sliced. If you want to see how to slice it, you can watch me slice it in my mushroom onion topping video. One red bell pepper, one green bell pepper, sliced. The onion and the bell peppers are for the pepperonata, so if you don't want to do that, you don't need it. Two cloves of garlic, crushed. Just like my dreams of being a YouTube star. One teaspoon of fish sauce, also for the pepernata. You'll be amazed at how much flavor this adds to your pepernata. One quarter cup of chicken stock. Oh, you see the bully, you know what that means. There's gonna be an epic food hack coming up later. One tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. If there are two vinegars you have in your house, the two best ones are red wine vinegar and balsamic vinegar. They can really add flavor to an otherwise lifeless vegetable dish. Before we do anything else, we're going to set our oven to 425 degrees. We need to let that heat up while getting the broccoli and chicken ready. Before we start the chicken, we're going to get our broccoli ready for the casserole dish. Yes, we're going to use a casserole dish. You might use a roasting pan, but I find a casserole dish is one of the best ways to cook in the oven. So we're going to add our half a tablespoon of oil to the broccoli. Broccoli really soaks up the oil, so don't be afraid to add a little more if you like. You're going to add salt and pepper to taste. If you follow the amounts of recipe, you might use a quarter teaspoon of salt, Ooh, that might have been a little too much, it's okay, my daughter loves the salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we're just going to mix that together. My favorite mix together, good old hands. Make sure your hands are washed. And thanks to Happy Healthy Wife for washing and drying the broccoli before. Washing, chopping, and drying the broccoli before I got my hands on it. It saved me some time. If you want to know how to cut up broccoli, you can watch my beef broccoli dish recipe. It's there. Okay, thoroughly been tossed in oil and pepper and salt. I can feel it. 
Now I'm going to put it right into our beautiful ceramic casserole dish. You can use Pyrex, you can use whatever kind of casserole dish you want. That's going to provide a nice bed that will soak up the juice, the chicken that gets placed on top. There we go. All right, now it's in focus. So we place a nice bed of broccoli which is going to soak up all the juice of the chicken that we are going to place on top. But we're not going to put in raw chicken as those two cook at very highly different amounts of time in an oven. So we're going to pan fry the chicken for a nice crisp crust first. If you had skin on your chicken, it would make for a really nice crispy crust. Now that our pan is getting ready and heated up, we're going to add the salt and the pepper to the chicken. You notice I'm not using a measuring utensil, I'm just pouring it in. Let me see, how much should I use? Half a teaspoon if you're following the recipe, that's about half a teaspoon of salt. And so half a teaspoon of pepper. More or less depending on what your family likes. Just like the broccoli, I'm going to use my hands and move it all about. Afterwards, I'm definitely going to wash my hands. But you move it all about with your hands. Get the salt and the pepper in every place. Some people will salt one side, flip it, salt on the other side, flip it. I'm just going to get them all kind of evenly salted and peppered this way. I can feel it on the skin of the chicken. Sorry, the non skin of the chicken. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to wait for the pan to get hot and put it right on. Now we got our oven on, we're going to get the pan nice and hot for the chicken. A nice full heat blast, and right on top. Let it heat up for about a minute or two, they're going to add a half a tablespoon of oil. Get ready to fry up the chicken to a nice crispy crust before we put it onto the broccoli to bake in the oven. Now the pan is nice and hot, we're going to add half a tablespoon of olive oil, approximately. We'll let that get nice and hot. Okay, the oil looks pretty fluid in movement, so we're going to add the chicken piece by piece. We don't need to cook the chicken all the way through, so we're going to do about three minutes per side. Get a nice, crispy outside, a little bit brown, before we stick it in the oven to finish the cooking process. The nice, crispy brown part is going to be used with the, the peppers and the onion, the garlic, for the vegetable fry that you can place on top of the chicken if you like. Give a nice, tasty sauce with your chicken. Or you can just eat it without the sauce. It'll still be very tasty. Okay, that's been about three minutes. You don't need to make it fully cooked. We'll have a nice a little bit crispy texture on the chicken. The bacon will finish it up. There you go, a little bit of brown. You can see a little bit of brown on this one. That's what you wanna get, that nice brown coating.
You can see this one up there's a little still pink. It's not gonna matter, it's gonna be baked in the oven. This won't be as brown as the others. Another three minutes on this side, for hopefully a nice brown coating. Okay, about three minutes have passed. Take a look. Nice and brown on this one as well. This one is good. I like how it looks. We're gonna put it in. Gonna put it in the roasting pan. I like how this one looks. This one's ready to be placed on top of the broccoli. This is a little more pink. So I'll flip it over. And with that little pink side down a little more, this one too. Move to the hotter part of my pan, the others. Look just fine. Then as all good is let these two cook a little more on this side. We'll put them into our roasting pan. And those a little more brown like I like them, so I'm going to put my roasting pan. So yeah, roast the garlic right there. Let's go ahead and turn off the flame. Or put your real low flame. We're going to use this pan to cook the onions and the bell peppers. We're just going to take out all of the chicken right on top of the broccoli. Our broccoli chicken is ready for the oven. Okay, our oven got preheated to 425, so now I'm gonna open it up, put in the broccoli chicken. Set my timer for oh, 12 minutes or so. While that's cooking, we'll get the onion and peppers ready. Thirteen minute timer is set. Let's finish the peppers and onions while we're waiting. If you don't want to do the peppers and onions and add to the dish, that's perfectly fine. It tastes wonderful just like that. Pepper, salt, fried for a little fried flavor, pops in the oven to finish the baking. Broccoli takes all that flavor in from the chicken. Oh, they melt in your mouth, both of them combined. But if you want to add a little extra vegetables to your meal to make it even more healthy and tasty, we're going to make the onion pepper thing. I forgot what it was called. Peconata, I think. So let's use the same pan we did the chicken because we can leave all that chicken sauce right in there. We're going to use it. And we're going to turn up the heat and start with the onions. Turn it up to a nice medium high heat. Okay, got it to a nice medium high heat. You can see the popping going on. We're going to add in the onion and bell pepper. Saute for about three minutes. all that oil and chicken coating, chicken oil, chicken juice on the onion and bell pepper. So you definitely want to stir once you put them in. You'll notice that the onions, they're not split apart yet. Do not split them up. Let the cooking do that. As you cook onions, they will break apart. Much easier than if you try to do it by hand. Save you from a lot of tears. Because trying to break apart the onions can lose more of those spices that will make your tears water. My heat's a little low, I don't like the sizzle, I'm not high enough, so we're gonna turn up the heat and get them cooked nicely. Medium high heat's recommended. Now all my onions are separated. I'm doing more of a stir fry than a saute. So I'm stirring it all the time. But mostly I'm trying to break up the onion. Recording. All right, that seems pretty good. 
We have a nice three minute saute. You can see the browning going on. You want the browning in the pan, especially in here. It's gonna add lots of flavor to your picante, picata, but whatever that's called. Now three minutes is up, let's add some, let's add the garlic. Straight in, I use a beautiful crushed garlic with my cheese, garlic cheese grater. This is how I crush my garlic. Give that a little stir to get the garlic to get a little bit fried to get the smell of the garlic going. Once you smell the garlic, a nice teaspoon of fish sauce. Stir it for about a minute, get the flavors combined. Don't let the smell of the fish sauce fool you. You're not really going to taste it. It's going to be very good with balsamic vinegar. Ah, right, minutes up. Let's add in a quarter cup of chicken sock with my epic food hack. It's time for an epic food hack. With Daddy. So the epic hack, you add in the water. And in this case, a quarter teaspoon. of the chicken bouillon. Quarter teaspoon chicken bouillon plus the quarter cup of water. It makes soup stock. We're gonna use that to get all those brown bits that we got for the nice high heat frying into the flavor of the onions and peppers. From the chicken, all that chicken that got burned, the chicken fat, adds a wonderful tasty flavor. Okay, so once we deglaze our pan with the chicken stock. We're now ready to add into it a tablespoon of the balsamic vinegar. You can see they're a little tender, the bell peppers and the onion, a little tender. A little bit crisp, not very crisp though. The bell pepper is a little more crisp than the onion. Onion tends to get really not so crisp. Now the extra flavor. Sorry about the out of focus there for a minute. Now I got some extra flavor. It's balsamic vinegar, a nice tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Get that excellent vinegary flavor. Go ahead and turn off the heat and mix it together. Now the pepperonata is complete and ready to be placed on the chicken as soon as it's done in the oven. It's got about three minutes left. Once it's all done, it's time to eat. Let's go ahead and plate our pepperonata. Put in a separate dish for those who like to put it. For those who want to put it on the chicken can, 
For those who don't want to put it in a chicken, don't need to, or you can eat it separately. Very tasty, flavor lovely, pepperonata. Our 13 minutes are up. Let's take a look at the chicken broccoli. You're gonna take out the chicken and the broccoli. Broccoli is grabbed all the flavor of the chicken, as well as be nicely roasted. Let's take it to the table so we can eat. When did Mama come home? About 10 minutes ago. The chicken tastes better than when you usually make it because there's more flavor. Why don't you try dipping a piece of the chicken in the sauce part? A piece of what? The chicken in the sauce part and you can... Not broccoli? Or that too, sure. It gives it an interesting flavor. It's a little bit spicy because of peppers. I don't really like peppers. In case you don't like the sauce, okay. Mm. Huh? Alright, interesting how the salt and pepper not only mitigate the taste of the broccoli, but also give the keep the added flavor to the chicken to make this chicken taste really good. This bell pepper sauce really doesn't add much flavor to the chicken. It just makes it more sour, if anything. Okay, I'm gonna try and eat the broccoli. Uh oh. Well, the broccoli pretty much tastes just like regular broccoli, cooked or uncooked. Since you made it this far, go ahead and try that like button. Just like my kids, try the chicken in the Peronata sauce. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Sundays. And just to mess with those who don't watch the full video, go ahead and slip the word peppercorns in your comments down below for a chance to shout out in my next video. Thanks for watching. Have a happy and healthy day.